Welcome everybody, beginners. Beginner yoga, this will be a tutorial for uh, preparation, understanding, and also getting friendlier with downer facing dog. This will be a class only in English. Probably next week I'll do another beginner only in Spanish. And my desire to do these little tutorials in beginner classes because sometimes the online classes that we've seen out there, they're far too advanced, so they are very, very, very complex into transitions and somebody at quarantine, somebody at home that would like to begin with a practice, we need to start with fundamentals, we need to start with not only understanding the physical aspect, the chaturangas and the fast pace and the muscular part, but also learning a little bit of why we do yoga, learning the key postures that are gonna help you with transitions and learning to pace yourself so this doesn't have uh, injury ending we want you to stay healthy and we want you to stay okay so one of the reasons that i find in my practice why i do yoga is because it provides absolute connection with the moment to what is happening now to how i feel now not what i felt a year ago not what it was my practice when i was 20 years old not what it will be when i'm 60 years old today I'm almost 42 years old and I can just only judge my day, my body for what is going on at this moment. And that's the most precious gift that yoga has offered to me to not always constantly in the future and appreciate the sensations of the day. And downer facing dog is a posture that after 20 years of practicing feels almost like child's pose. But I remember perfectly when I started to practice yoga, the first class when I see the teacher saying, oh, and take downer facing dog and please rest. My eyes went wide up like, what do you mean by rest in downer facing dog? nickname in Sanskrit slash slang Adamuka. Well, in the beginning, of course, there's a whole bunch of things that need to happen before for you to become friends with downer facing dog. And this is the class that we're going to do today, uh, a tutorial in it. So first of all, we're going to do a quick centering. Shake your legs for a moment, sit on top of a block or a full blanket. Have your blanket, your block ready, and a cushion ready, and your mat. Bring one foot in front of the other, one heel in front of the other, or half lotus, or however cross-legged position feels right. Place your hands into your mudra. Today I'm going to choose sand, janana mudra, right hand on top of left, elbows bent and relaxed. And the only thing we all have in common is that we all breathe. So we can share that, your anatomy, my anatomy, everybody's anatomy, that we breathe. Watch the way you breathe. Feel the flow of your breath moving in and out of your body. From the bottom to top, you start breathing into tummy, breathing to chest, let the breath go all the way up to the shoulders. And as you were pushing the energy down towards the ground on the exhale, empty the lungs. One, two, three. Feeling the earth beneath your seat bone. Inhale. One, two, three. Exhale, one, two, and three. With this very grounding feeling, continue the count in your mind. 
close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Visualize the Drishti a focal point, something still and not moving. Center your soul. Ground the thoughts. And be at union with yourself, being at complete integration with physical, emotional, and a spiritual real. There is a congruence in the three edges. What I think is congruent to the way I speak and the way I behave. And I try to do no harm to my body or to others. Bring your hands into prayer pose. We salute each other. Om Shanti. Shanti. Namaste. Welcome everybody to class. Wonderful. So let's have a good good shake into your legs relax them in front of you when you're beginner cross-legged position is something that you might feel a little bit too much into your ankles or your feet let them relax and let's begin with a little bit of uh, warm-up into your hands because I should notice down here facing dog for some of the students that have tendonitis or arthritis and the wrist is a big, big, big topic. So we're gonna be in a gentler position. We're gonna sit into butterfly this time, feet together and is open to the sides. Now allow the spine to go fully open. Let's begin with few soft uh, breaths. Take a deep inhale, bring both arms up really stretching all your spine up 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 and on the exhale bring your hands down to the heart into your chest let's warm up the wrist the first time interlace your hands send your hands out and forward then bring them up start opening shoulders look up head up if you feel comfortable in exhale let the hands go slowly you don't want to go fast you want to go slowly pacing the breath and the movement together that's the vinyasa movement inhale one more time bring your hands all the way up neck extensions allow your head to lift bring your palms together on the exhale bring your hands into your heart into prayer position interlace your hands and on the next inhale bring your arms out forward and then bring your arms up 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 and on the exhalation bring your hands slowly down 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 three more times take a deep inhale Exhale, hands to the heart. Interlace your hands in front of you. Inhale, shoot your arms out forward. Then go with the arms nice and high all the way up, all the way up. And on the exhalation, release your hands down. And we do the last one, only calling the breath, resting your head and mind. Inhale, go up. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. As you finish in here, let's do a little bit of side bend opening and also continue.
continue warming up or preparing a hand that is not used to receiving weight. Majority of the people is typing all the time or on phones all the time. So we're developing like clawed hands that have no movement. So yoga is incredible, fantastic system to recover mobility on your wrist. Hands down to the floor. Take a deep inhale. Bring the right arm to the ceiling. Right here. And on the exhalation, you're gonna walk now the left hand to the side. The next thing you're gonna do is plant your hand into the ground quite firmly and then do traction of your body as the arm gets straight and let the arm go in a diagonal over the ear to the other side. Holding there for five breaths. Really feel the stretch in both of your hands, that one on top shooting up together, that one on the bottom taking the weight on, stretch the waist, breathe in all the intercostal muscles, warm up the shoulder, bring the breath all the way up underneath your armpit, and just feel the rib cage like an accordion expanding each inhale. And on the exhale, maybe stretching a little bit deeper, maybe not. On the next inhale, bring your arm up. And on the exhale, bring your hand down to the floor. Awareness into the moment. Inhale, bring now the left arm to the ceiling, nice and lifted. And on the exhalation, Walk your hand sideways, land into your hand, do traction towards the left side, arms straight over the ear. Remember, you're trying to be firm on the heel of the hand that is on the ground as you continue stretching sideways. Sorry for my accent, remember Spanish is not Sorry, English is not my first language. So you will hear things as stretching, but I mean stretching. Go a little bit farther. Maybe the accent allows you to be more aware of the audio instruction and get less distracted. Maybe trying to figure it out what I'm saying. <laughs> Breathe and stretch. Have fun with your practice. Feel joyful as you stretch. It's okay for yoga to feel delicious. It's not these compilations of very demanding, painful stretches. That's not a good way to understand yoga. Understand it as this beautiful system to keep you healthy, alive, and present. On the next inhale, bring yourself all the way up, rise up. And on the exhale, bring now both hands down to the floor again. You've been sitting in butterfly for quite a while, so you didn't notice, but also in this beginner class, you were stimulating meridians that run on the outside of the legs to the inside of the leg, to the outer edge of your foot, kidney, gallbladder, and liver meridians. Now, let's take a deep inhale, lengthen the spine, prepare yourself on your first flexion, and on the exhale, you're gonna try to maintain your spine straight and not curve right away, lifting. Remember you're sitting on a full blanket or sitting on a cushion. And right there, straighten your spine one more time. Take a deep breath, inhale. And straight on the exhale, try to find the edge when you need to stop. Maybe you find it right there. Maybe you can go a little bit deeper, maybe farther down going all the way down. Breathing to low back, breathing to mid back, breathing to upper back.
and deep exhale trying to fall deeper whatever limit you had one more time take a deep breath into low back into mid back breathe all the way to your upper back and on the exhale one more time you release 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 now bring your hands right underneath the shoulders, roll yourself up, bring yourself up. One vertebrae at a time, lifting. Once you're nice and high, bring the knees together. Ah. Oh. Bring your hands back and we counter pose, removing the cushion and do a uh, windshield wiper. Just move the legs from one side to the other one side to the other stretching into your hips on the next inhale the knees return to the center keep breathing and we're gonna continue on with more preparations if you think the entire class is gonna be downer facing dogs probably it won't be probably will be all the things that need to be open before you go ahead and try it or to improve it Second part that we need to work in is a little bit into more rest, but working in now tendons and ligaments in the inside. So I'm gonna show you first this uh, side profile before we go into cat cow, and then we're gonna go into cat cow. So first of all, we're gonna bring the hands right underneath the shoulders and the knees underneath the hips with the toes very tucked under. That's how you look sideways now. Let's have the view in the front. I wanna get closer so you can see the hands right there. So the first thing is, some people cannot even do this because this part is absolutely in flame. If that's your case, and this is extremely painful, try at least for three breaths, shake one hand, shake the other, and then Little by little, you're gonna start opening your hands. Of course, if the doctor said not to do it, then don't do it. But sometimes it is just calcification on your hands or that fact they're not used to going into this direction, that's all. So it will take time to open your hands in yoga. Now, the next step is to start working with different parts of your hands. You're gonna turn the inside of your wrist in into one hand switch the weight in there and now turn the other hand and try in here very important not to be collapsed the heel of the palm is pushing on the ground the arms are going straight all your body comes up straight you're keeping abdominal muscles into suction giving you side profile so you don't want to look like this you want to look like this working into a stability and there is a last alignment here that if you are already in a hundred please stop right there if there is still movement you're gonna turn the fingertips in towards your body right there and that one the inside, we call this the eye of the elbow, is completely forward, stabilize the shoulders, right up. And if you feel that your hand is about to break, well, then you should be here instead. But if you feel fine, just keep holding in there, stretching your hands, preparing them for downer facing dog. Keep your belly into suction, don't give up, don't give up, right there. Awesome, take another inhale, and on the exhale, switch a little bit of way back, peel your hands off the ground and shake your hands. Ooh, that's gonna feel so, so good after you let go of the hands. Now, let's move on with our next preparation. This posture is a yin yoga posture, but we also use it in yang, and it's called melting heart. Please be careful with all the recommendations I'm gonna give into shoulder pain. I'm gonna recommend you to have a full blanket or a cushion. We're gonna go again into hands and knees. Please now observe the line of the knee with the hip. And now you're gonna bring the arms in front of you. 
let's assume that there is no issues on your shoulders and let's assume that the arms straight feel okay and we're gonna start with the first variation and from there we're gonna give adaptations keep the toes tucked under I think this is a very very close similar stretch to downer facing dog you're gonna turn the seat bones up do like an upper facing cat send the arms a little bit farther utilize leverage of the hands to go back and you're gonna try to stretch like a puppy going all the way back here and letting your head touch on the ground if you are where I am right now and you have no pain or discomfort the hands have no much weight the arms are absolutely straight and you feel a stretch to the shoulders all the way to back muscles all the way to your lower back now what happens if the shoulder is chronically a little bit calcified or tight I only was able to do here and I cannot touch the ground with my head then you're gonna put a block and you're gonna let the block take your head so you're comfortable now what happened to students that have history on the joint please stay where you are and whenever you go back and put your arms straight because of previous rotator cuff injuries you cannot work with the arms straight this gets fixed by working this with goddess arm or cactus arm bending and that will make it much easier and you can still have the stretch on the spine the spine looks almost like a slide as it does into downer facing dog breathing this will be another great variation with the forearms on the ground and seat bounce to the ceiling and still opening seat bounce up to the ceiling still feeling the back stretching holding there keep the toes tucked under breathe so repeating from the beginner puppy dog if you were all good this will be your variation arms on the grounds if the shoulder has history but hey there you go this is your first variation if you have chronic wrist injuries if you cannot go to downer dog you do poppy dog or melting heart another inhale and on the exhale place your hands underneath the shoulders switch back into child's pose <sighs> and it's gonna feel nice and restful into your child's pose breathe into your low back breathe into the mid back breathe into your upper back so as you continue resting in child's pose that variation that we just did one more time I like to repeat things two or three times could be a great variation for somebody that cannot do full downer facing dog for previous injury on wrist or arthritis on the wrist now we're gonna go into uh, warming up for your Achilles tendon, which is a huge part in your feet for downer facing dog and warming up a little bit deeper into your hands. We're gonna go up into all fours. Good. We're gonna go a little bit farther away from the hands. And now we're gonna place the forms on the ground so we don't get the wrist too tired. When you're ready, you're gonna send the knees a little bit farther back both, and you're gonna work really hard in here to not become completely open and let go of the belly or going forward too much. You want engagement of your abdomen and not collapsing. Now you're gonna start with the right leg behind you like this. Your ball of your foot is on the mat. Your hips is slightly elevated. And now you're going to start doing traction back until you feel a nice stretch into Achilles tendon into your calf muscle so you're feeling it right in here opening your arch 
and you're working upper body strength, not letting yourself collapse. You're actually engaged. Continue suctioning into your belly and let your hands rest and stretch, stretch, stretch. Good. Now take another inhale. And on the exhale, bring the knee in. Switch onto the other leg. Vas a cambiar hacia la otra pierna. Tuck the toe under. Metes el dedito. And now we're going to stretch into your calf muscle, into Achilles tendon. A super important part in down dog. You know how everybody wants the heels down into the ground. And you have to be doing these stretches every day as well if you're running, as well if you're hiking. So recommended you do this. Keep breathing. Stretch the traction back until the stretch is into your calf muscle and into your ankle. Take another inhale. And on the exhale, let's bring the knee down into the floor finally and when you're ready send the hands a little bit farther bring the legs back and come flat on your belly nice and let's just release into the ground for a moment if you're not used to upper body strength that for sure for a little bit maybe a little bit of tension into your upper back and shoulders let's do a counter pose stretch and strengthening strong back muscles, open shoulders. El siguiente, next one is to really work into opening into chest and shoulders. Bring your forehead on the ground. Bring the arms in front of you. Reach out forward with your arms. That's it. Flexibility. Inhale, lift up. And on the exhale, pick up the legs of the ground. And you're going to hold here five breaths. If you're down here, it doesn't matter. This will allow the spine to start recovering flexibility, being able to lift, being able to rise, toning glutes, toning back muscles, strong. Take another inhale, breathe. And on the exhalation, we're going to go down, down. These are really important to recover openness into the midsection of your back. Estos son importantísimos para recobrar. You regain movement into your upper back. Sorry, a little bit of Spanish came out. Remember, I'm used to always teaching bilingual classes. <sighs> If this midsection has mobility, then downer facing dog will get easier. If this bottom curve has mobility, then you can really bring seat bones up and make it pleasant. So let's do one more for here and then we move forward to finally try downer facing dog. Bring your hands behind you, interlace your hands, take a deep inhale. If you feel like you're here, try to open through the heart, open through the chest, bring yourself up, bring the legs up, hold, all the body is raising up, todo el cuerpo arriba, arriba, all the way up, all the way up, good. Take another inhale, rise all the way up. And on the exhale, calm down, relax down, and bring your hands by your sides, rest. Take a moment, take a deep inhale, hands underneath the shoulders, bring yourself back up to all fours. And on the exhale, we're going to go into extended child's. Measurements from downer facing dog. Everybody's different, so the split between hands and feet will be according to your own length. So how are we gonna know this? This is a great place. 
great cue to get your down dog according to your body type. Anatomy according cues. Not an exact angle because it's people from different lengths, different shapes. So let's do it according to yours. How you do that? Make sure that the glute stays down to your heels. Actively extend your arms out forward. Spread your fingers wide. Arms are nice and straight. Be careful. You don't want to overreach that you dislocate your shoulder out of its socket. Steal the shoulder into its socket. Right in here, nice and engaged. Fingertips touching the edges of your mat. In the next inhale, bring yourself up onto your knees. And now, tuck your toes under. Keep the knees bent. On the exhale, push back. And then slowly, slowly, keep the knees bent. Try to turn the seat bones to the ceiling. Let's do that a few times. On the next inhale, you come back with the knees into the ground. On the exhale, knees of the ground and push traction back. Inhale, place the knees on the ground. We haven't straightened legs yet. Exhale, go back up, turn the seat bones to the ceiling, stretching, knees bent, inhale. And go up, exhale, rise, turn up, belly in, engaging into your stomach as much as you can. Inhale, bend your knees one last time. And on the exhalation, turn your seat bones up. Now you're warmer into your spine. You might find there's more space to go back. Try to bring the legs straight. And try to bring the heels down. Now if things didn't go according to plan and I look more like this and I feel more like this, bend the knees a lot. Turn the seat bones up and push. It doesn't matter if you need to have the knees bent. That will be a great beginner's downer facing dog. And as you get stronger and more mobile, then the legs can go straighter. Now, if your legs are going straight, please go ahead and stretch. Breathe. Hands, look forward. Middle finger and index pointing forward. Traction back feet hip width apart and if your heels are here and they cannot come down it's fine maybe your anatomy and the Achilles tendon won't let you to bring them down or maybe with time we don't know keep stretching breathe and now try to bring one heel up on the ground off the ground and then the other of course, you're going to start to feel the arms. And if you're not used to it, of course, you're going to start sweating and shaking. Breathing. Inhale and exhale. Seat bones up. Almost done. Almost done. Breathe. Hold. Nice. On the next inhale, both heels up, up, up. And on the exhale, finish with the heels as low as you can have them. And go into Charles Pose Balasana. Take a moment, breathe. Again, reminding you that it's absolutely normal if you're newer to yoga, beginner yoga, or maybe if there is a lot of rigidity into your shoulders and legs, down dog for sure will be a tough pose. But you want to hear the good news 
The good news is when your body gets used to it, when your body gets familiar, after quite a few lessons, you're gonna start immediately to see difference. And eventually, it's such a joyful stretch that gets you strong, that gets you flexible, gets you very balanced. All right. I have a little bit of news for you. We're gonna repeat the entire thing again. Be strong, shake your hands a little bit. These beginner classes, you can turn them off at any moment because everybody is at a different kind of beginner level. So if your beginner level for today was enough, do a little bit Shavasana and you have enough information to ground. If you feel very healthy, very strong, very mobile, then let's continue. So we started from child's pose. We extended the arms forward. We're gonna do this with a little bit more flow now. Open your hands, elbows off the ground, shoulders in its socket, not dislocated. Take a deep inhale, come up to all fours. Tuck the navel in, tuck the toes under on the exhale. Go up with knees bending to downward facing dog, doing traction back. On the next inhale, bring the knees down to the floor. On the exhale, let's go up again and stretch. Inhale, knees to the floor. Knees continue bent. Exhale, go up. Stretch. Inhale, one more time. Knees down to the ground. Exhale, lift. You're not dropping yourself. You're using your core to be light. Inhale, last time. Exhale, let's go up. Continue with the knee span. Continue doing traction back, back, back. And now let's start standing the legs as much as you can with still the seat bones up to the ceiling. If you were in an Iyengar class, you will have a partner probably with a strap around you pulling you, allowing the seat bones to lift. Well, a lot of us don't have straps and a lot of us don't have the second person to keep pulling you. That's why it's so important that you learn to self-adjust your practice. I always tell you, imagine you were lost in the desert. How will you do yoga? So right here, without the props, without the other partner, bend your knees, turn the seat bones to the ceiling and then try to lower the heels down. One more time, footwork. One foot up on the inhale and on the exhale the other. Few rounds. One and one. Seat bones continue up. Arms are strong. You can do this. Almost done. Almost done. Good habits into down dog. And remember, if the is scenario is more like this and here, patience do your best to continue moving to feeling this straight stretch and bring both heels down if you feel like it and on the next inhale bring the knees down and let's rest one more time into beautiful child's pose How was that? Well, it's, it's important that we learn these classes or that we refresh each other, those important aspects in this pose. And we can do three hour workshop, three hour tutorial into downer facing dog. I don't wanna abuse of your wrist. As many of you that you're a beginner, and many, many, many people right now are using the computer a lot, cell phones a lot. So there might be tension in store there. So I think giving each other a little bit of a break to go into your hands will be a good idea. You have that little sequence that I taught you a little bit ago to start getting familiar into the traction when you go back into downer facing dog which eventually is the intention into this practice, into this pose. Why do we do so many downer dogs? Because it is not only a great pose to counterbalance extensions, but it's also a great pose for transitions, which is the next part we're gonna look into it. 
downer facing dog as a transitional pose and I'm going to give you today in this class two scenarios because we don't have that much time okay downer facing dog as a transitional pose when you do sun salutations you've seen it before or if you've seen them in the internet how many downer facing dogs we do let's start on the pose itself going up with all the things that we previously analyzed and one of the most most typical transitions that we do is to lunge forward with one leg right so this is resourceful to have in mind is that some people might need extra help you take the right leg up to the ceiling on the exhale to bend your knee and you step your foot forward. That's it for a low lunge, for a high lunge, or you can go into warrior, it doesn't matter. But that's a transition. Now place your hand onto the ground. On the next inhale, you're gonna bring the leg back again. Good. And repeat it one more time to be clear about it on the exhale. Bend the knee and step your foot forward between your hands. What's going to happen to a lot of beginners is the first time you try this, the legs stay here. And that's how it couldn't make it. They have no more room. If that's the case, grab your foot and move it forward. And with time, you're going to recover your flexibility and get limber. Trust me. And now I'll go back one last time. Good. And let's do the other side. On the next inhale, bring the left leg back and up. And on the exhale, come forward, bend your knee, and step your foot to the front. You land in here, and from here you can go into low lunge, you can go into a warrior, whatever you want. Plant your hand to the ground, and on the next inhale, bring your leg back one more time. And on the exhalation, try this again. Step your foot forward. Reminding yourself that if you needed the help, you walk it forward. Reinforcing the information about transition. And last time on the next inhale, back to downer facing dog. And on the exhalation, you step back and back. So here you go. This is one of the most traditional things. Launching forward and downer dog is such a great plateau to do that. Also to close into Uttadasana. Very beginners, bend the knees and do tiny little steps to the middle of the mat. Bend the knees deeper and give tiny little steps to walk back to your feet. And that way you feel here completely with the weight on your feet, your hands are free. Let's do that again. Bend in your knees, bend them deeper, stand your hands out forward, shoulder width apart, and now step one leg behind you. And now the other leg behind you, seat bounce up to the ceiling. And to stand on your feet in Uttatasana, standing forward bend, soft bend to the knees, walk a little bit forward, and now let the hands walk a little bit back, open your feet hip width apart, and from there you can do dangling, you can do any other pose you want, you can go deeper. But this is a great variation to do. We'll do it again. Bend your knees, plant your hands on the ground, step back to downer facing dog. Transitions again, looking at transitions from dog. Take a deep inhale. On the exhale, tiny little steps. And then follow with tiny little steps with your hands. And we're gonna finally stay here. Capping each elbow with each palm and staying down for a few breaths. Hold in here.
good. And we're going to practice one last time this transition to end up in child's pose. Bend your knees. Plant your hands. Bend the knees deeper, deeper. One leg and then the other. Back to dog pose. It's the last one. The last one. And then go down. Child's pose. Ah. And take a moment and breathe. Now roll yourself up one vertebrae at the time. Using your hands if you need to, all the way up. <sighs> roll to your side. Shake the legs in front of you. Relax your legs. Wonderful. <sighs> Obviously, if you haven't done yoga in a while, you're gonna definitely feel this tomorrow in your arms, in your shoulders, in your legs. So let's finish with a little bit of stretching, okay? So we're not sore tomorrow. We're gonna sit again into butterfly position. Sit on top of a block. Nicely lifted. Bring the right arm as you inhale up. Exhale, bend with the other hand. Squeeze into that elbow. Breathe five times. Nicely lifted. Try not to push the neck forward. Stay straight. Just gentle stretching. Nothing too fancy. On the next inhale, bring the arms up. And on the exhale, stretch the other side. Of course, you're gonna feel this a little bit tomorrow, but hopefully it feels in a nice positive way. On a way that you work your upper body, that you stretch your back muscles, that you strengthen your shoulder. That's how you wanna feel yoga in a good positive way. Take a deep inhale, bring both arms up. On the exhale, release your hands down. Now. Bring the arms in front of you. Bring the right hand underneath the left into a little bit of eagle. Maybe that's it, what you can do. Maybe you can go ahead and bind and stretch a little bit forward. Take a deep inhale. Go up, up, up. And on the exhale, bring the elbows in towards your body. Curl the spine and really stretch yourself. Inhale. One more time, let yourself Bring up, lift up all the way. And on the exhalation, gonna bring the elbow in, hand out forward. Last time, inhale, rise, 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 open. On the exhale, do the other side, el otro lado, balance. Coordination, inhale, open up, lift up, rise. Exhale, elbow come in, stretching your back muscles. Inhale, one more time. Lift, rise, all the way, all the way, all the way. And exhale, go in, in, in. And last time, inhale, go one more time, all the way. And you're done on the exhale, release, shake it. Shake your neck a bit. And now bring the knees. Shake the neck now. Sorry, circle your neck a bit into half moons. Shaking the neck will be like that. No, no, no. Just a little bit of half moons to one side. A little bit of half moons to the other side. Avoiding the neck back. Half moons go forward, shoulder to shoulder. And forward, shoulder to shoulder. Now on the next inhale, head goes center, bring the knees to the center, and on the exhale, release the legs, shake your legs. <sighs> now come off the pillow. Come all the way forward to the front of your mat. We're gonna do a little bit of cooling off on your back. Bring your arms in front of you, nice and straight. And one vertebrae at the time, getting your props ready if you need it. Let's go down, down, down. Ah. 
Hug the knees to your chest. Rock side to side. Hmm. Now, as you're here, another part that you might feel a lot tomorrow if you're not used to downward facing dog will be your hamstrings the back of your legs so what we're gonna do is keep the right knee into your chest bring the left leg straight interlace fingertips on the back of the leg and bring the leg up straight why am I giving you this as an easier option? Because some people want to try to grab this and you're going to look this way and then you're not stretching hamstring. So grab from whatever you can grab that you can bring the leg straight and really have an honest stretch for your hamstring. You can start here, you can go higher, and maybe some of you will be able to go up the way to the ankle. If the neck comes off the ground, head comes off the ground, then you must put something behind you so the neck is not suffering and you're comfortable stretching. Count five breaths stretching into the back of your leg. One more inhale, and on the exhale, bring the knee bent into your chest, single knee, inhale, exhale, bring your forehead up, lift up, take another breath in, and slowly down. Release your leg down into the floor. Shake it. Bring now the left knee into your chest. First hug in so the lower back relaxes. And when you're ready, bring your hands back to the thigh interlacing and extend your leg up to the ceiling remember you don't want to look like this unless your hamstring is absolutely locked then you're going to be patient or even grab a belt or a strap if you may if you can what i'm going to invite you to do is to bring the hands a little bit deeper if there is a space you see how my leg does that well, try to bring the leg heavy on the ground, stretching in. If that's impossible, you can bend the other leg, no problem, which might make it easier. If you're fine, just work it out here. This is the last part of your cooling off. Ya estamos en enfriamiento final. One last inhale, and on the exhale, bring the knee to your chest, inhale, and on the exhale, bring your forehead up for a moment, and now you bring yourself down, hug both knees to your chest for the last time, just bending here. A very comforting moment as you roll from one side of the kidney to the other side. After a couple of full rocks, Get yourself a center, inhale. And on the exhale, bring your forehead up one more time.
good. Inhale, breathe in there. Head back to the ground on the exhale and arrange yourself for Shavasana, beautiful relaxation. Even when beginner classes are a little bit slower, there is a lot of teaching, a lot of cues, and it doesn't feel probably as fast as a Hatha yoga class. As you can feel right now, there is a little bit of shaking on your arms, strength into your legs, stretch into your arms, into your legs. So you're doing a lot of stuff. It doesn't matter if you're working slow. Now, dispose yourself to have a break, letting the legs go on the ground or propping them with something underneath them if you need to. If you are new to yoga, we probably want you to understand how important it is that you give yourself this last break. It's called Shavasana, corpus pose, fully relax. And it's a moment where we willingly allow ourselves rest, a break. Come down into the rhythm of the breath, and now the breath is gentle. You can open and close your hands a few times, especially if you weren't used to receiving weight and you feel tension on your wrist. This is your class. If you want to be in a longer Shavasana, you stay here as long as you want. If you're ready to come back, you're going to hug the knees into your chest. Rock side to side, shoulder to shoulder. Take a deep breath, inhale, and on the exhale, forehead up, rising up, 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 up. Bring the head down, roll to one side. Stay there if you need a longer Shavasana. Let's close in sitting pose. I'm gonna get near her by here, right here. Nicely lifted, breathing into your body, feeling all the beautiful side effects of your practice vibrating in your body, the length, the strength. I want to thank you so much for joining me into this very special class. Downer Facing Dog is my absolute friend, my absolute comfort. So remember, if you have friends that want to learn how to start practicing this system, share this channel with them. It's an open channel in YouTube where we are working the classes by donation. Underneath this video, there are the donation links if you scroll down a bit. And anything helps, you guys. We're a team currently between five and six teachers providing a full-time schedule of yoga two or three times a week from Monday to Friday. My name is Anna. I'm the director of Drishti Center, the name of this channel. I hope you enjoy this. And if you already know me and you've been taking classes with me for whatever amount of years, know please how much I miss our contact. But every time I'm teaching a class, you're in my thoughts, you are in my mind, my visualization to give the right cues, to remember seeing your bodies moving. So we're still connected, we're still here. 
Namaste and have a beautiful, beautiful day. See you next time.